Hey guys, what is going on? It is your old pal CHA. Check out this shirt I got at Spirit Halloween. Most likely to kill it with the new blood Jason on the front. I mean, how do you beat that? And then I got this at Spencer's Gifts. The gaudiest mug you've ever seen. This Terrifier mug. I am a coffee fan, so, you know, I, I use mugs a lot. And I even kind of like just drinking regular drinks out of mugs. I don't know. Something about holding a mug is a lot easier and come more comfortable to me with the grip as opposed to the squeeze. But, um, you know, it's just one of those things. Listen, I hope you guys are enjoying so far the Halloween season. We are creeping into it. Who knows what date it is? Like right now, it is August 12th when I'm recording this. God knows what day it is because I record so much that maybe this comes out a while. I have videos as of right now that I filmed in July that haven't dropped yet. I just try to, I try to keep the videos coming for you guys. But my point is... Um, you know, I don't have a point, but here, here's what we're going to do today, guys. Um, I thought it would be cool, you know, to actually show some of the younger viewers and to kind of reminisce with our older viewers here that are, you know, my age or a little bit older, looking over some titles that Scream Factory has and Anchor Bay. I've got three examples here. We're going to go through each of them. Um, now, this is something I want you to be able to tally more so at home. I don't know if I can have, uh, if I'm going to break this down in enough ways to really give you like, this is a winner, this is a loser. But we're going to look at some Anchor Bay releases and some Scream Factory releases that they put out of the same titles. And maybe see if one of you guys actually say, you know what? The presentation of the Anchor Bay one, I think that one was actually better. We'll see. You know, it's going to be fun to do this. So let's get started. Why don't we start, guys, with... Um, Honestly, just like the biggest title from, from Scream Factory and Anchor Bay. And obviously, I want to start with Halloween. Um, I want to show you right now. I'm going to use the 4K release of Halloween to show you guys. Now, if you guys did not see a video I did a little while ago about these cool slip cases, this is from Blockbuster Box. <clears throat> if you guys did not see these cool slip cases, this is from uh, VHS Slip Covers on Instagram. He does these and really, really cool. So, yeah, this is a VHS Slip Cover. Let's take a look at the Halloween 4K. This has been out now for a couple years. This came out in 2021. It's funny. People don't like this art. I, I got to be honest. I kind of like it. It's grown on me a lot. Um, this was like something that made us all so happy coming out of the pandemic. Uh, we were looking as horror fans for something to just kind of give us this kick and make us be excited again because like t life had changed big time. You know, I really feel bad for the kids in school, too. Like, I, I know that there had to have been seniors in high school when, when this happened, and I just feel horrible for those people. It's just so sad to think about losing their senior year. But, you know, when this came out, it was really cool when uh, the first movie was announced. Now, this release, we'll kind of break some of this down, guys. But in actuality, I'm going to say this. In terms of a release, I think that the Scream Factory Halloween 4K part one specifically is probably one of the greatest releases of physical media uh in today's landscape and i know you're like really christian now i i know you're probably saying to yourself well it's, it's a movie on 4k that's cool uh it's got it's black case 4k case but the reality is they didn't skimp on the features they did such a good job let's just uh i'll give you a few bullet points to talk about um Disc 1 obviously has the new 4K scan of the camera negative, approved by Dean Cundy, which is important to people because people love the way Dean Cundy's movies look. Um, you have a brand new Dolby Atmos track, so they didn't skimp on audio either. They actually went and did a whole new track for this. We've got the audio commentary with uh, John Carpenter and uh, Jamie Lee, an audio commentary with Dean Cundy, Tommy Lee Wallace, and Nick Castle. Unfortunately, I don't think the Deborah Hill commentary was on there. It might have been on there. It might have been on there. We'll see. Um, on the Blu-ray, you get the new scan as well on that, which is also super important, especially at that time. Because you got to remember, people hadn't really, really jumped to 4K yet. Some, a lot of people still haven't, but at 2021, I think even so, it was just really important to have the 4K scan, the new scan on the Blu-ray. Um, you also have the Dolby Atmos track on that as well. This one has the audio commentary with John and Jamie again, uh, as well as Dean Cundy, Tommy Wallace, and Nick Castle. But this also has The Night She Came Home, which was a documentary that was made in 2013 that was put on an Anchor Bay release, so they got the license to put that on here as well, which is smart. We have TV version footage on this, the theatrical trailer, TV spots, and radio spots. Now, this is where things get interesting and why this release was so well-received. Disc 3. Let's talk about Disc 3. Disc 3 had the original color timing presentation for the Blu-ray, which was very, very important. 
A lot of people were super psyched about that when that got announced. A vintage interview with producer Mustafa Akkad on here. Halloween, a cut above the rest. Amazing documentary, but that's not all. Halloween Unmasked 2000. And then Halloween, the extended cut in HD with the TV inserts added into it. So if you're a Halloween fan and you're like, hey, what, what, what do you want to watch? Do you want to watch a Halloween documentary? Do you want to watch uh, the TV version? You can grab this release and basically get whatever you need from it. Okay, and so like that's that makes this release truly perfect. And and look, in reality, the newer releases should be the more perfected versions. It's not always the case. Uh, I think there's an infamous uh, DVD release uh, for from Just Till Dawn that had way more special features than the Blu-ray disc had when that came out. And apparently, it's just because they never license out special features and things like that. Which that's not a special edition Blu-ray release, so it's not the same ballpark. Uh, but, you know, I think it's important to show that if you're going to be a boutique label, a collector's label, and you're going to have collector's edition on here, you have got to do it right. So this is obviously a really good example from uh, uh, Anchor, Scream Factory is their Halloween 4K. Extremely comprehensive. The only thing you really can't watch on here is obviously the Halloween 25 Years of Terror documentary, which would have been nice to have on here. And honestly, I think they should have gone that even further step and have put that on a fourth disc or maybe a special feature on a, on the another disc depending on how big the discs uh the gigabytes where they had per disc i don't know because that was anchor bay they, they theoretically could have licensed that out as well which i think is now under Lionsgate. And, and obviously uh halloween uh the inside story which was a biography documentary that would have been a whole nother issue which is hard to get nowadays i did a video on that but very hard to get so flawless release from scream factory um very very cool this is still available but interestingly enough if you get this uh, 4k today it'll come with just a regular slip cover over it I, as a matter of fact a few years ago i remember seeing that from best buy which was the 4k but not in the hard shell box that these are uh released at initially you can get it with a slip cover over it so people that order these on amazon it's kind of a grab bag you don't really know what you're getting so i want to just mention that there so that's going to be impossible to beat okay but with anchor bay I always appreciated how they, 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 they milked Halloween, you know, and, but I, I think what they did so well is they were good at making you as a collector not feel so bad about buying it again. You know, Scream Factory, maybe not so much. So Anchor Bay, I'll give them this over that. Um, this was a release that came out in 99. Um, it's going to lack documentary features on this, but this right here was the limited edition lenticular, which is, you know, with the lenticulars, it's, it's, it's definitely a dated thing. Right, lenticular slips uh, is not something you see a whole lot anymore. But in 99, 2000, which is when this came out, this was like, people loved it. I remember as a kid seeing lenticular slips. We used to see them on the VHS tapes. Two infamous ones is obviously Jack Frost and Uncle Sam were amazing. But to see the Halloween one on here, which you got the pumpkin and then you've got Michael's uh, mask on here is amazing. So this was a 1999 collector's edition DVD release. And this was a thick boy. Obviously, you could tell that this thing uh, was probably aimed by a window because Halloween and the logo is a little bit faded. It's a little bit more of a red color. Um, but at the time, this was a pretty cool DVD release. Um, we'll look at the discs on the first disc. We actually get the television version in here, which is a nice touch, honestly, uh, being a, a collector's edition release for this, which at that time was a very, very, very big deal. Um, and then we get our DVD release with THX audio. Now, what's really cool about this, and I I've, I've did another video recently, I just filmed it before this, but again, I don't know when it came out, about uh, really how Anchor, Halloween, the Anchor Bay Halloween run and how sensational and cool it was. This release comes with a vintage postcard that I even said if the people are interested in it, and I'll ask it here too, if somebody's interested in this, if people are interested in this, I should do a fun raffle giveaway where I will actually write out a note to the winner of the postcard and mail it to you, so... Very, very cool. But yeah, th at the time, this was this would have been... The idea of having an alternate cut movie on a, on a DVD release would have been mind-blowing, right? So this was a really cool release. Now, they had a separate DVD release for the television cut. But yeah, this special edition release and these thick cases, love those. Very cool. Doesn't beat that Anchor Bay release. But this one, at the time, would have been pretty close in, in, a, in a sense, right? Uh, in reality of like the perception of the release at that time was the Divamax 25th Anniversary Edition, which obviously came out in 2003. Legendary release, guys. Just a legendary release. Now, this one is where we debuted a few things. Um, 
Uh, first off, we got our special bonus features disc on that. Uh, really cool gray case on this one I really like. Uh, but with this one, what we got, which was brand new, was the A Cut Above the Rest documentary. So, you know, when, when Scream Factory was starting, what was so great, and I always use the Army of Darkness release as, as the... Uh, the touchstone release. I tell people, if you're going to get into Scream Factory, what's something you should get? I always tell them, you, you definitely need to get um, the anchor, the Army of Darkness uh, Scream Factory release. They did this amazing documentary for the movie that is just as enjoyable to watch as the movie itself. The Cut Above the Rest documentary, guys, which has D. Snyder doing the narration, sensational. This one really features a lot of Erwin Yablons, who I think is... Uh, literally the most important guy, real, uh, really one of them. You could you could argue that it's really is a, a, this perfectly meshing team effort with John Mustafa and Irwin. But like Irwin was the first person to have the inkling, the nugget of the idea. He was the first guy to say, "I want to do this horror movie that takes place one night about a babysitter being stalked by a killer, and we're gonna make it on Halloween night, and we're gonna call it Halloween." Like that was Irwin. That was Erwin. He theoretically could have gotten another director to make the movie for him. Thank God it was John. You know, but like, Erwin was the guy. Then they went to Mustafa. Then he went to John. Then they went to Mustafa. Boom, then the movie started. So, I always like seeing Erwin, and he's Erwin's still with us, which is really great. So, yeah, great release with a new documentary. But the F Scream Factory Halloween release, I I I'm critical of some stuff Scream Factory does. I always will be, and that's my job, as well as other people that do this. Or consumers, really, not even just YouTube, but as a consumer, you need to uh, hold the company's feet to the fire that you like because you want to see them do the best they can. I think we're making strides right now at Scream Factory in the right direction. Um, but I have to admit that that Scream Factory 4K release, to me, is about as perfect as a release as you can get. Next up, guys, let's look at uh, another combo this is Manhunter. Now, this is an interesting release because this is out of print. Uh, but still, I wanted to do this because I just found this great release from um, the used DVD store. Not of this. I'll show you. This was the Blu-ray release of Manhunter, uh, which was a big deal when it came out. Came out and did not last too long. Manhunter is the basically the original version of Red Dragon. It's also a Michael Mann film. It does have Hannibal Lecter in here, but played by a different actor named Brian Cox. Now, there's a big, I say there's a big debate. There's a debate of which version is better, Manhunter or Red Dragon. To me, Manhunter is so stylistic. It's so Miami Vice. I love it. That being said, um, Red Dragon, I actually just rewatched my 4K from Kino Lorber. Sensational movie. The movie's great, right? But I love Tom Noonan as the killer in this movie. Just sensational. But this release was good. This has new interviews with... Uh, director of photography Dante Spinotti and actors William Peterson, Tom Noonan, and Joan Allen knew the music of Manhunter, including interviews with the composer Michael Rubini, Barry Andrews, Gary Putin, Rick Schaefer, and Gene Stashuk from Red 7. So some of the guys from the bands. Theatrical trailer and still gallery. They also give us the director's cut, which is HD with the uh, TV with the added scenes in and standard definition. Um, the Manhunter look, a conversation with cinematographer... Uh, Dante Spinotti, Inside Manhunter with star William Peterson, Joan Allen, Brian Cox, and Tom Noonan. This was a sensational Scream Factory release. There's no doubt about it. Very, very, very well done. Um, you get your original poster art on there when you can reverse it, which is great. Um, I, I, I desperately want this movie to come back in uh, print for people. Uh, probably on 4K, preferably from Kino Lorber. I'm going to tell you guys why. I think because they've put out Silence, Red Dragon, and, and Hannibal. I would prefer to keep the Lecter movies in the family, albeit that this is Brian Cox and not Anthony Hopkins. I'd still prefer to keep it that way. Uh, this was a golden era of Scream Factory. There's no doubt about it. This was a sensational release. They did everything right. So let's talk now about this release. This is a cool release, guys. I just got this. This is the two-disc limited edition release of Manhunter from Anchor Bay, Another Thick Boy. I, there's something about the Thick Boy DVDs that Anchor Bay was doing to me that are just, I mean, they scream, uh, this, is what was this is what was considered a film fan's release at the time. I like the presentation of these. I wouldn't be against these today if these designs came back with the, uh, the, the binding in the middle where the discs clamp from the front and the back. Uh, really, really cool. So let's see, what does this release have to offer? And then let's look at the uh, anemones, if you will, uh, that this Manhunter has. First of all, you know, THX Audio, which at the time, that was the premier audio uh, style. 
Um, so very, very cool. What reader did this release? This was a 2001 release, by the way. All right, so let's read the back of the special features and get you guys a idea. So disc one, theatrical version, widescreen presentation, enhanced for 16 by 9 TVs. Featurette, the Manhunter, the Manhunter look, a conversation with cinematographer Dante Spinotti. Featurette, Inside Manhunter with stars William Peterson, Joan Allen, Brian Cox, and Tom Noonan. Theatrical trailer and talent bios. So a lot of those special features that we heard from here, with the exception, with the exception of the few new ones, like the um, uh, new interviews with William Peterson, Tom Noonan, and Joan Allen, and then also the composer, um, and the guys from the bands, the other ones that we saw from Disc 2 are the special features that were basically done for this release. So what was done right was this release definitely added new features, and they they got everybody. They had to pay, I'm sure, you know, to get uh, to actually go out and get. Um, who do we have? Uh, we yeah we had yeah Tom Noonan and Joan Allen on here, which is great. I mean, it's important to have Tom Noonan in here. Um, but this one, I mean, you got to give them credit for actually going out of the way to do the features. And this also has the director's cut. Now, this one's marketed on here as just widescreen enhanced for 16 by 9. So this is going to be a weird thing to say that this may have over this one. But this is something that people deal with. Um, this is HD with SD inserts of the director's scenes. This one is going to be a little bit more seamless because this is a DVD format. Now, to some people, they would some people they may say not really that concerned about that. Other people may say, I prefer it that way because something about going from jarring HD to more of an SD look it just it, it takes me out of the movie. That's something you can consider because it's a lot easier to watch something in a 480p ish look because of this DVD and see the inserts come in and they seem pretty much close to the same than watching something that's going to be a big boost drop down in quality. So not something you can really hold against Scream Factory, but uh, just something to take in mind because as a consumer, you know, you got to decide how you want to watch these movies. But let's see, does this come with anything? Obviously, this release has the special features and the slipcover. What does this have? Well, when you open up the front, you're going to see something really cool, this confidential uh, police file. Let's take this out. This is really cool, guys. So... This is the, the Confidential Manhunter file. So let's open this up. Wow. Look at that. On the inside, you've got uh, all these cool uh, writings with the actors' names on here. Uh, little scribbles and picture drawings on here. Now, this is stuff that is embedded into this. This is not something that somebody actually did. This was on all of these when you bought them. I mean, it just looks like it was actually done by somebody because it's so well done. Um, wow, this is really cool, guys. National Tatler newspaper clippings with a uh, sticky note writing on here. Here's actually a, like the note that you would see the uh, Red Dragon Tom Noonan put on there. Uh, very, very cool. Case 133569 transcript of crime scene walkthrough sheet. Very cool. Cool. Theatrical one sheet page with uh, pictures of our star on there. Brian Cox as Hannibal Lecter, which I think he's a very, very, very good Hannibal. Uh, I really do. I think people should give it a chance. Really cool. So these are all pictures from the movie. Kind of like art cards, but not so thick and sturdy. God, that's a nasty shot. Yeah, Tom Noonan in this movie was sensational. This is probably Tom Noonan's best film. Um, it's hard for me to argue that. Well. The Coming of Hannibal... Yeah, this is all about the making of Manhunter on here. Continued. And something that is gone today, chapter selections, Manhunter. And then we also have on the flip side, the director's cut, Manhunter, chapter selections. And, you know, somebody had to go through the trouble of, you know, figuring out the names of scenes. Because they were, you know, the chapter selections have scene names for everything. So, I think that is a really nice touch. And, um... You know, which way would I watch Manhunter? Well, the the reality is, if I was gonna watch the director's cut, I'm gonna go to the I'm gonna go to this release. I am because I I did pop this on and it is way more seamless. Um, but with the reality of knowing that the quality is gonna go down, obviously from the Blu-ray, doesn't look bad. Um, if I'm gonna watch the director's version, I'm gonna pick this. In actuality, I prefer just watching the theatrical version because I think it's a, a great version of the film. But 
I'm going to make this one a tie because that's I, I think I could go really either way. I, I'd be happy watching either of these releases. You as a consumer would have to ask yourself what you would prefer with this. But a good job from Anchor Bay with this. I really like this. Manhunter is a great movie. I, 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 I would call it a masterpiece in my opinion. Is it my favorite Michael Mann movie? It may be that or Heat. You know, it may be that or Heat. So we got another example right here, guys, I want to go to. And this is The Rise of Leslie Vernon. Look at this, guys. Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. One of the coolest 2000s horror movies. And the thing about this movie, guys, that got me was I was for sure wa I was watching a stupid movie. And I was like, why do people like this? And then it got me. It got me. I won't spoil it because it's still somewhat of a hidden gem. Most of you watching this have probably seen it. Um, but yeah, Scream Factory got this, which was a surprise because at the time they weren't dabbling too much in 2000s horror. So uh, the, the Rise of Leslie Vernon, man, great movie. Um, you know, you can reverse the art to have uh, this, the, you know, the DVD art on there, which we'll get a better look at in a second. This isn't a movie that's great to look at, though. It's not a movie that, that really is going to shine on a Blu-ray release. Excuse me. But we do have a new HD master from the Digital Intermediate, new interviews with producer David St Staivi, audio commentary with Nathan Bissell, Angela Gothels, Britton Spellings, and B Ben Pace, audio commentary with co-writer-director Scott Glosserman, moderated by filmmakers Adam Green and Joe Lynch, the Movie Crypt Podcast, the making of Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon, the casting of Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon, deleted and extended scenes and extended trailers. So, I mean, the picture quality on this is good, but it's a found footage movie, essentially. And then it turns into a movie. Uh, that's as much as I'll say. I don't want to swell too much. So it's not a movie you're going to watch for picture quality and, and, like, to be wowed by the visuals. It's just a really clever movie, a really clever found footage style movie. So it's a good Blu-ray release from Scream Factory. Not something that was probably going to knock the doors down. Uh, when, when it was announced per se, but I think what it did do was because people just started getting into physical media in a bigger way during this time, I think, um, that it, more people were seeing it. But here's the DVD release of Anchor uh, from Anchor Bay of The Rise of Leslie Vernon. This is cool. Now you can see there's blood splatter right here, and this is the exclusive Circuit City DVD release that says, uh, exclusive hatchet sneak peek DVD available inside. That's cool. Now imagine getting a new Scream Factory release. Let's say uh, when Halloween, uh, for the 4K for Halloween came out. Let's say that they actually were able to put a DVD release in there that said um, sneak peek for Halloween ends come on, on disc. And you know, maybe Halloween Kills had come out right around that time that 4K came out. And you got a cool disc that gave you a sneak peek for Halloween ends. That would have been insane. I mean, that would have been such a cool memento at the time. Would have been something you can only enjoy, really, and and really, uh, you know, for a short period of time until the movie came out. But then you could look back on it and say, man, I got to see this because of that release. So, you know, maybe it's a little silly, but, you know, I think that's kind of cool. But what's cool about this DVD, look, you can open this up, boom, and there's the DVD art that we saw on the, on the Blu-ray. Um, and look, this even has a bunch of, this is cool, a bunch of uh, positive uh, ratings on the movie. Stephen Hunter, Washington Post, Quint, It Ain't Cool News, Eric Camos, Film Threat, and Michael O'Donnell, Los Angeles Times Review. Wow. So we pull that out, that slip cover, which is really cool. We got our DVD release right there. Uh, widescreen presentation, enhanced for 16 by 9 audio commentaries with Nathan Bissell, Angela Gothels, Britton Spellings, and Ben Pace, the making of Behind the Mask, the casting of Behind the Mask, the lead and extended scenes, trailers, and a DVD-ROM screenplay. The Blu-ray did not have the DVD-ROM screenplay. Now, you probably saying to yourself, Christian, come on, who's downloading that? Well, that's for the audience to decide. I, I, I want you guys to really give me the answers of what you prefer more so. These are the, are the Screen Factory releases. Now, me, I, I can't say I go out of my way to look at DVD-ROM screenplays, but, I mean, as far as aesthetic and presentation, you got to say, you got to admit that the, 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 this DVD release is wicked cool. I really like the design of the slip, and, uh, you know, yeah, they're very, very, very cool. You know, really, really cool. So that's something I really, really dig. Um, I got to say that this release is cooler. It's This is not a movie that needs to be a, a high-definition release, per se, because of the way it's filmed, this found footage style. But it doesn't hurt. It's not like it hurts. And I appreciate them trying to make it look better, going too close to original elements at the time. But, 
yeah, I think I think for me that behind the mask DVD is the cooler one. So I just wanted to do that, guys. Let you see the past and kind of the past still with some of those releases from Scream Factory because they're a little bit older. But it's a way to kind of mark: Are we improving in ways? Are we are we simplifying in other ways? Where is the uh, effort being put into and that sort of thing? So. I don't know. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you enjoyed this, I could definitely do a part two. I think doing the Dawn of the Day of the Dead Blu-ray from Scream Factory and, and the Anchor Bay DVD would be really, really cool. And a few others. I could find more. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed that, let me know and uh, I'll gladly do a part two. But for now, this is your old pal CHH. Take care. I'll see you guys next time. Huge, giant thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Without you guys, this would not be possible. To get behind-the-scenes photos, videos, music, private live streams, and much more, you can subscribe to my Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. Thank you to my patrons.